Hey everybody and welcome to The Indie Guy. I'm The Indie Guy, Jonathan Moody, and I'm here to talk about my Blu-ray collection for Full Moon. Um, I just got a whole bunch uh, this year, so um, the first, and you know, the first one I think I might have showed you some or so, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and kind of give you guys uh, the lowdown of what I just got. So I'm going to do it alphabetically. So it's, I'm not going to go into which how which ones I got first. I might do that later. Kind of let you know which ones I got first. Kind of in the order um, of ordering them. And the order of which they actually came. Which was not the same. It's kind of weird. But um, if you've been following along. You probably know a lot of these things anyway. Um, first off. Um, this is awesome. I don't know if anybody has ever seen this movie, Castle Freak, but it is great. Uh, it's got Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, and um, I'm going to do a review of probably each and every one of these Blu-rays at some point, um, you know, coming up. Uh, I'll probably do one, another one tonight, and then, you know, other ones later on, so. But, first of all, Castle Freak, great movie, love it. Uh, I was very happy to have it. The only problem with the movie... Not very many special features on it. I um, was hoping that they would have, um, you know, commentary and other stuff like that. Unfortunately, they don't. Uh, they only have, like, the Castle Speak uh, with uh, Stuart Gordon. Uh, I haven't really checked this out yet, so um, when I do my review, I'll let you know what I think of the special features. But um, the only thing I really don't like about it is I got the interview with William Shatner, which is also on other... Ones I think it's also either on Lurking Fear or I don't think it's on Lurking Fear. It's probably on Doctor Mordred. So I'll look that up when I'm uh, looking at the special features for this next one, which is Doctor Mordred. I love this movie. Speaking of Jeffrey Combs, I love him. I think he's a great actor. Uh, I really would want to work with him one day. He just every single thing he does, he brings class to it. Um, there's this amazing commentary, and I'll. I'll once again, I'll do a review later on of the actual movie. Um, I don't think there's any one movie in this group that I don't like, you know. So, just so you know, I'm going to be saying I love every single one of these movies. Next is Doll Man, which I just recently watched and love. It is such a weird, weird movie. Literally about a 13-inch hero. Uh, 13 inches with an attitude. It is so freaking funny at times and... Also very traumatic. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley, who played the uh, the, the new Freddy Krueger, um, is hilarious in this, in a way. And he's also very, very good as a villain. Um, I really like him. And um, just a great movie. Lurking Fear. Um, another H.P. Lovecraft one, but done by C. Courtney Joyner. Or Courtney Joyner. Um, I... I love this movie, and it freaked me out. Now, I love Castle Freak more. Um, I don't know why, but I just, I do. But at least this one has commentary, so I'm looking forward to listening to the uh, Courtney Joyner commentary track. So, uh, after that, Puppet Master. Ah, the original Puppet Master. Just got this today. And, um, though it doesn't have very much extras, and, you know, very many extras, and then the, uh, there's actually a commentary track with Hen uh, with Charles Band and Kenneth Hall that was on the UK version. So I'm thinking about getting the UK version. It's only like 13 bucks total, and that includes shipping. You know, so I'm you know that's dollars to pounds and stuff, and it's 13 dollars, not pounds. So it is amazing. I'm I'm really looking forward to getting the. Um, these basically the special edition version of this at some point probably by the end of the month i will have a copy of that so where i will at least order it and probably get it in february so i'll have a good amount of stuff coming i might i might get it before then it might come by the end of january who knows um another one puppet masters 10 so these are the only two puppet masters i'm gonna want to get two through five at some point I'm um, going to try to get those later, uh, so check that out, Puppet Masters 10. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen I haven't seen 9 yet, so I'm, I'm wondering how the Axis 
stuff so there's access rising, access termination, access whatever the, the uh, original nine was, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, to checking those out just to see what the new Puppet Masters are like. Because I know Charles Band's kind of just trying to reinvent this kind of uh, storyline, I guess, for it. Now, these are my Empire, two Empire movies. So I have these two Empire ones. Technically, I've got more because I think some of them were made during the Empire days, but there are still full moon movies. I don't know which ones, like, he took into his library. I guess these are the ones I have, but... These, I know, are Empire movies, original Empire movies. Reanimator, um, packed with bonus features, as it says. I mean, two audio commentary tracks, tons of interviews, including ones with, like, Richard Band, which I'm really interested in seeing, the guy who did the music. Though, I, I will want to do a review of this again, and I will hopefully mention about the, uh, the music was, you know, very much like uh, Psycho, which was, it was this plan but the problem with that is that, like it takes me out of the movie because i'm thinking of psycho when i'm thinking of it and not thinking of reanimator which reanimator had its own original tune uh which ever after that richard band has done nothing but amazing tunes like period um so i really enjoyed it uh-huh robot jocks now what's really cool about this one open it up you can flip it to whichever side you want. So see right there, it's got the, the one I just had. Or do that one, which is like the newer version. But here's the thing. I like that one better because it's silver of the thing, but it's only got one of them. This one's got two and looks badass, but then you can barely read the lettering on that one. So it's weird. Weird to say which one I like. I guess you also have to look at the back. In the back, this I think this back looks cooler than this back. I don't know. Uh, but so I always put it, I've been putting it down with uh, my favorite one being the the original, um, original one. His name is, okay, it does say Orion for both. So it's pretty much the same kind of thing, so. But this is the original, I believe, the original 80s box cover uh, for, like, the video cassette, so. Love it. Speaking of 80s, Sorority Babes and Slime Ball Bowl of Rama. Almost six hours of bonus features. Uh, there's the Tales from the Bowling Alley, which is like two hours and 16 minutes. Then there's commentary about the making of the um, uh, Tales from the Bowling Alley, which with the director, uh, David Dakota talking about that stuff. I just learned his name was David Dakota. I've been calling him David Dakota, and I thought I was right, but I've heard him in the interview call himself David Dakota. So I'm guessing that's the way you pronounce it. I'm very, I'm very happy I didn't, like, meet him beforehand and, and call him by his wrong name, which, I mean, he would still probably, um, you know, fix me up or whatever, but, you know. Now, Oh, and so it's got the making of, uh, I, I forgot to mention, so it's got the, the the making of, the commentary to the making of, and then also it's got a commentary in itself, and it's got, with the with with David and the writer and the screen queen, uh, Brink Stevens, who, I mean, I love her when she does commentary. She should do commentary for every film she's in and, other, and every other film that's out there, period. She's just... Very well spoken. I love her to death. Um, would hope to one day work with her as well. Maybe I'll put her in a movie with uh, Jeffrey Combs. That would be great. Now, this is a trilogy set that I've got. All, uh, all individual sets. I mean, they're not like in a box set or anything. But Trancers 1. Now, I'm not saying trilogy, but this is actually, I guess, whatever 6 is. There's 6 of them. 6 I haven't seen yet. And... I've seen four and five, but I've not seen six, and I don't really want to see six. But I'm going to have to because I'm a completist. I like to watch them all. But that doesn't mean I'm going to buy six. It really depends on how 
how interesting and how, you know, what other stuff is. So they haven't done, they've only done three transfers on Blu-ray. I'm looking forward to the fourth and fifth because the fourth one has Lachlan Monroe in it. I love him. I think he's just a great actor. Um, so I, I'd really would like to see what, what they do. And if they can get David Nutter, the director of it, to do a commentary track, that'd be awesome. But yes, so the first one's Transfers 1. That's audio commentary with Tim Thomerson and um, Charles Band. And let me tell you, I just listened to that commentary track last night, and it was awesome. Very informative, very cool. I love those two together talking. Um, and then it's got a featurette that Daniel Griffith, the guy who's doing the uh, documentary on Empire and, and Full Moon, um, did, and some other rear... This is rare interviews with Tim Thomerson, Helen Hunt, and Michael Ward, which I think they just put back on the uh, trance. Well, I think it was pretty much from the video zone. Uh, yeah, they don't have the video zone. But they also have the City of Lost Angels segment from the Pulse Pounders, which is pretty cool. I really like that, too. But And it just almost didn't feel like... A, I don't know. It didn't feel like a Trancers movie, necessarily. I mean, it had everybody, but it didn't feel like one. Anyway, uh, that was that short film uh, that they, they did for it. Transfers 2, awesome commentary track with Tim Thomerson, Megan Ward, and Charles Band. Megan and Tim are just hilarious together. They're just great. Always kind of having fun. And then Charles, you know, Charles is great, but he tends to not remember a lot of stuff that had happened and. And Tim and Megan have to kind of remind them. And it's kind of an interesting commentary track. I'm looking. Yeah, I was very happy with that one. And then, Transfers 3 I just got today. So I'm really looking forward to the commentary track with Courtney Joyner and uh, Tim Thomerson. And then also, Death's Reckoning making Transfers 3 featurette, as well as the original Video Zone. Now, what's cool about the Video Zones is that the Video Zones kind of. I think each and every one of these have them. And it's a behind the scenes. Um, I don't think it's it's only like the ten minutes or whatever that they actually do the thing. But what was cool about the video zones was back in the eighties uh, they would do these uh, video zones and like after the video cassette, so you would get like thirty minutes of like special stuff. So you would see like a behind the scenes of the making of it, like interviews, things like that, and then you would see like a spotlight on a certain director or writer or actor or something. Um, I've been watching the original vintage ones, and they would show, like they did one with, I believe Courtney Joyner was probably one of them. Uh, David Dakota was probably one of them. Dakota was one of them. Um, and, you know, a bunch of others. Really cool. Awesome stuff. Um, and then there was, like, other stuff, like trailers and things like that. that you know, just kind of fun to to watch what they were up to next. And they liked it. It was pre, like, internet. Like, nowadays, they can just put that stuff on their website and people can check it out. And they don't need to really do this stuff. But I think it's even cooler if they do bring it back, like, completely, um, where where they do the video zone on the DVDs or, or whatnot, where you can see, like, a spotlight on a director or something. Like, maybe even as a e little extra, extra thing. Um... But I I don't think it's not as crazy as it was back in the day because they had like T Ted Nicolau as a director who did like the subspecies movies and a whole bunch of others. And you have like all these d different people who are constantly working with them. And nowadays it's kind of like in, out, in, out. Like you don't know. Charles is mainly directing everything. And so, um, you know, if they did like a spotlight, I think they would do one on like William Butler, the guy who directed... Ginger Dead Man, um, uh, two and three, and stuff like that, and whoever directs, you know, something else. But they don't really have other directors. You know, usually Charles is doing everything. He's, he's only doing like three movies a year now, not like the twenty or so that he would do. He would produce back in the day. Time has um, has not been so gentle on Full Moon. So um, a lot of Sadly, it's just it hasn't been, and you know they haven't been doing the as well as they used to, and everything. Um, the money, the money has has kind of dried up as far as as getting all that stuff out, especially since he does everything himself. And so I think it's awesome, 
and I I love Charles and I love uh, Full Moon and I I'm excited about all these things, but I'm more excited. I want to see new material from them. Taurus Trap. All right, so this is uh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys more heads up, heads up and I'll, I will say this is the first movie from Full Moon's Blu-ray that I got. So I thought that was cool. Um, I have not listened to the commentary yet. Do want to listen to David Schmoller, who uh, also did like Puppet Master and did a few other things. So I, I would like to listen to that um, at some point. Uh, I really enjoyed um, Tour Strap. Thought it was really scary. And then I found out like the music that was used was in like the the, the guy who did the music did like Carrie and a bunch of other other uh, uh, like a bunch of um, God what's that guy's name Brian De Palma stuff like. Uh, I don't know, tons, tons of things. Um, I can't even get into. Raising Cain, I think, was another one that he did. So things like that, and just really well done music. Uh, this Italian composer, I believe. Um, what's his name? Let's say. Uh, music by Pino Dinaggio. Dinaggio, something like that. Really good. When I looked at his, uh, when I looked at his, uh, Thing, like his uh, credits I was pretty impressed alright last but not least because this is in alphabetical order Trophy Heads oh my god I love this movie love it love it love it I listened to the commentary last night very like I said I was talking about Brink Stevens being a wonderful commentary person and uh, commentarian I guess that would be a word uh, she did, she's so wonderful with Charles, um, and since this is one of the newer movies, Charles could remember a lot of things, so it was kind of fun to hear him do commentary with this, and he, he just sounded giddy that he got to work with everybody, um, because as a lot of people were saying in, like, um, a lot of the, uh, uh, interviews and stuff, they didn't really get a chance to work with Charles. They worked with other people that Charles appointed as director. Like, I believe Denise Duff, who um, I believe does a commentary track, but she's kind of silent, kind of quiet in that. But she um, she didn't talk about, uh, uh, like, she didn't get to work with uh, Charles, I don't think, on, uh, on anything. So Michelle Bauer did stuff with, like, David Dakota and things like that. So I just... Um, very, very cool that he got to produce and direct this film. And I think did Danny Draven do the uh, editing? Howard Wexler has been still been doing the uh, editing. Was Alex Nicolau? Uh, must be Ted's uh, son. So very cool. Uh, also, movie about a, basically about a a uh, guy who's like in love with these scream queens from the past and thinks that they're going to be forgotten so decides to to do something about it in a very creepy kind of way and you have you have to watch the movie to to get it but I, I bet you can kind of figure out a little bit from uh you know the thing um the guy who plays it I just became friends with him on Facebook so wonderful he's a great actor and I really hope that they do another uh basically another one this so um well that was all my blu-ray so far i have subspecies 2 coming to me on friday so i'm really looking forward to that because unfortunately it is not on full moon streaming uh one one three and four are on it as well as vampire journals but i don't know why subspecies 2 is on blu-ray but is not on uh full moon streaming i don't know if that was a mess up or if they just didn't want it on there i don't know but apparently that's a lot of people's favorites. So I'm really looking forward to watching that. Um, and listening commentary. And other stuff that's on that disc. Or that, that one's packed. Which was kind of disappointing. It kind of reminds me of the Puppet Master uh, Blu-ray. Puppet Master Blu-ray has like... one The first original Puppet Master has just like a making of. You know? And things like that. So it sucks that um it doesn't have a commentary track for that one but i said like as i said there's a uk version of the puppet master that i'm going to buy for 13 bucks and it has commentary track with um you know uh 
with everybody. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, that's, I believe that's, that's it. Really? Uh, oh, oh, last, last thing. This is going to be a little over 20 minutes. Crazy. Already, already over 20 minutes. Oblivion. I got this for free. And, um, look at that cast. Oh my goodness. Andrew Divoff from the Wishmaster movies. Meg Foster. She's been a ton of stuff. I don't even want to go through her, uh, um, through her list of, of things that she's been in. Um, Isaac Hayes, who was like the chef from South Park. Uh, Julie Newmar. Uh, he's also a singer. Uh, Isaac Hayes was. Julie Newmar, who played like Catwoman and the and she kind of does like a really funny kind of Catwoman kind of character uh, called Miss Kitty. Obviously, a lot of these things are kind of poking fun at at themselves. Like George Sakai uh, from uh, Star Trek, he completely uh, pokes fun at himself. And Carl Struken. Uh, also, um, there was this one actor. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, Erwin Keys. Erwin Keys was in this movie as well, and he is freaking awesome. I love him to death, and uh, I did not get to meet him, but a lot of my friends got to meet him and work with him and says that he's just the bomb diggity. He was. And sadly, let him, uh, you know, have him rest in peace, because he's, he was awesome. And so, um, but Oblivion, um, I'm looking forward to getting one day the Oblivion 2, and maybe even... They will put them out on Blu-ray. That would be great. Um, I'm sure they're on the list of things. But this is like their free DVD of the month for January. So if you buy something from the Full Moon store, you know, themselves, uh, they will send you a free copy of Oblivion. So just so you know, you can buy something for like 30 bucks or something and then get a uh, you know, free DVD of this. Not a bad deal. Don't know what next month is going to be, so I plan on buying something from their store next month. I'm thinking it's going to be Head of the Family, so I've been wanting that Blu-ray for a while. But I don't want to buy it yet from their store because I don't want to. Um, I, I want to. I want to have it. I want to have uh, another free DVD and see what it is. All right. Well, that is it, I guess, for this. Um, I think I might have showed you guys my my DVDs, and if not, I'll someday I'll do a DVD collection one. But thank you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, I Like I said, I'm going to have one more, and then I plan to get, like, four more. So I'll have, like, up to 19, or maybe I'll get five more and I get up to 20. So, all right. Well, hope you guys have a great day, and enjoy the rest of your uh, week. Bye.